Next on Tider Insider Television, Alabama goes through the gauntlet. That is SEC Football Media Days. Plus, another recruit decides to roll with the tie. We'll discuss it all right now on TITV. Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tighter Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Kerry Harris. We see it every year. They may not be the Beatles, but they are the bona fide rock stars of SEC Media Days. The Alabama Crimson Tide, welcomed by hundreds of fans on Thursday inside the Hyatt Regency Birmingham. Nick Saban, of course, right in the middle, middle of the fans and the media. He is the man in the ham. And with that, we say good evening, good evening, everybody. I can't even say it. I'm so excited about Media Days having come and gone. Welcome into Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm Gary Harris. Ice cold Pepsi again tonight. Just went and took it out of the fridge. Love that sound. Love that taste even more. That's good. good. That's refreshing. Another year of Media Days is in the books, Rod, and the Crimson Tide. Once again, the media's pick to take home the SEC crown. And that is despite the fact that Alabama's losing one of the best quarterbacks in program history, the left tackle, and the leader of the defense. Alabama was selected to win the West and the conference in 2014, but Nick Saban isn't ready to crown this year's team just yet. He says it's about getting back to being Alabama. I think the, the emphasis for us um, is for our players to reestablish their identity, for us to reestablish our identity as a team. And uh, I think to do that, you know, everybody's got to buy in, 100% buy in uh, to the principles and values that helped us be successful before. Uh, nobody needs to judge, nobody needs to complain, nobody needs to question. You know, everybody needs to buy in to the things that have helped us be successful and submit to the things that they need to do to be successful. And here is how the media saw it last week. Alabama, 154 votes. And as Nick Saban reminded us, though the media has only been right four out of 22 times when picking a champion, so maybe it's not a great sign for the Crimson Tide after all. It was also no surprise to see several members of Alabama's offense, defense, and special teams named to the all-SEC squads. Eight players landed on the first team alone for Alabama. That led the conference. Here's a look at the first teamers. Yeldon, Cooper, Howard, Quanjo on offense, while Robinson, DePriest, and Collins were selected on defense, and Kristen Jones was selected as the first team kick returner and all-purpose player. Well, a year ago, Rodney, we had no question who Alabama's starting quarterback would be. A.J. McCarron had two national championships under his belt. But this year, there's no A.J. And the question mark at that position is huge. And, of course, that was a big topic of conversation at Media Days. Nick Saban made it very clear again that Blake Sims and Jacob Coker, along with Bateman and some others, will be in a competition for the starting job when fall practice begins next month. We spoke with SEC Network analyst, Mr. College Football himself, Tony Barnhart, about his thoughts on Jacob Coker. The only thing that I, that I know to do is to ask people about his skill set. Does he have the skill set to be a successful quarterback in the SEC? Well, I talked to, I talked to Jimbo Fisher. I talked to Randy Sanders, who's a quarterback's coach. They both love the kid, hated to see him go, but he's, he's behind the Heisman Trophy winner. So height, arm, talent, intelligent, the skill set's there. Now, he's got to translate those skills onto the field. That's Lane Kiffin's job to help him do that. So we don't know. My sense is, is that he will be fine, but we, you got to play the games to find out. And another piece of news was made uh, last week. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, Lane Kiffin is the offensive coordinator. He'll be working with the quarterbacks, and uh, there's no doubt that he has developed some good ones in the past. But Nick Saban has been very consistent, Rodney, on this subject that Jacob Coker or Blake Sims or Bateman, whoever it is, is going to have to earn that job. Nothing is going to be given 
to any of those quarterbacks unless they prove that they're the one that deserves to start. Yep. And I thought Barnhart's analysis was perfect. We've said pretty much the same thing here over and over again. Certainly when you look at Jacob Coker, he has all the tools. There's no question about that. You know, we've heard the comments from coaches like Jimbo Fisher, Randy Sanders, and others that have uh, raved about his skill level and the things that he can do. But again, you have to see him do it on the field. He hasn't taken a snap in an Alabama practice yet. I think fall camp will be really, you know, once it gets going in August, be uh, very interesting to watch that quarterback uh, situation. Again, Blake Sims has improved dramatically. We know he had an outstanding spring, maybe not the best spring game, but, you know, certainly has done an outstanding job. Will be very competitive in that battle. And I've said this, and I believe this, uh, and now it kind of came up at SEC Media Days that I thought that Blake Sims would continue to w would have a role. And what I mean by that, I, I wouldn't surprise me if he has a role that actually, you know, plays in games, even if he didn't win the job. Not saying he won't, but even if he didn't, I could see where he would continue to have some sort of role uh, in the game, whether it was a series here or a series there, but I could see that. You know, I almost did the next story before we talked about Lane Kiffin, because when he popped up on the video, it made me think of USC. And that was big news last week, made official that Alabama's season opener in 2016 will be against the Trojans. Alabama has agreed to a deal to face them in the Cowboy Classic kickoff game in Dallas in 2016. It will be Alabama's second appearance. Remember, they just absolutely pounded in Michigan there a couple of years ago. It'll be the first time these two teams have met, though, since the 1985 Aloha Bowl. But, Rodney, I know we remember 70, 71, 77, 78, two behemoths of college football. Mm -hmm. Those were all great games, history-making games. And now to have this series, yeah. uh, even if it's just a one-time neutral side game, I'm excited yeah, about it. Yeah, I am too, Gary. You know, when you talk about it, certainly jars a lot of memories for us a little bit older guys, I guess you could say, you know, 71. Uh, certainly was a game that kind of got Alabama rolling again and out in Los Angeles on a Friday night when Alabama upset USC 17 to 10 and then 77 they go out to Los Angeles again and they beat USC who was, who was favored in that game and then the next year Alabama's number one and USC comes here and, uh, and, and beats Alabama in Legion Field but you know Gary the funny thing is do you know the home team has never won in one of those games? Now, now that won't be a factor in this one. I was just one, thinking that when you were pointing that yeah, out. Yeah, won't you be a factor in you this don't wanna, one. You don't want to play it at home, yeah, so it's probably right, good for both right, teams right. that's neutral side. Ought to be a great game, though, and a, a lot of fun. Well, stay tuned. We're just getting cranked up good on this edition of Tider Insider TV. Coming up, we're talking recruiting. It was a little addition and subtraction for the class of 2015. We'll talk about both of those cases. And also coming up, we'll welcome in your phone calls, emails, and tweets. The information on how you get in touch with us, 205-348-WVUA, that's 348-9882. Email us, PITV at WVUATV.com, or reach us on Twitter, hashtag Tider Insider TV. We'll be right back with more of the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV. A happy ending for Elijah Saw, the former top football recruit out of Georgia, suffered a career-ending injury and was offered a scholarship by Alabama anyway, or they offered to make their scholarship to him good. The NCAA approved a waiver on Monday that will allow Shaw to sign a non-football scholarship. He won't count against the 85 total, but he is expected to have a role in the football program, and that is awesome news. And Rod, Alabama has been busy on the recruiting trail as always. This week, they landed one of the state's top offensive linemen in Brandon Kennedy out of Wetumpka High School. This is a guy that reminds some of Josh Kasher, the recruit from uh, coming in this year from St. Paul's in Mobile. You know, not a very tall guy, but strong, great footwork, really good technique. I like him. Yeah, I, you know, Gary, when you look at it, I, I thought Lester Cotton, you know, talking to a lot of people, too, that, that played in the SEC and uh, played on the offensive line. They felt like Lester Cotton was the number one offensive lineman in the state. And I know a lot of people are really high on Tyler Carr, who committed to Auburn out of Gadsden Southside. But, you know, people I talked to really felt like Brandon Kennedy might be the number two offensive lineman in this state behind Lester Cotton. And I think he, he is, Gary. I think he's been underrated, and I think it's a big pickup for Alabama. All right, let's hear now from Kennedy on why he chose the Tide. It was just the atmosphere, how great I felt on campus. I also got to, you know, room with the players and spend time with them. And I just felt like I feel at home in Alabama. Last night, talking with my mom, you know, my family. Yeah. It was a hard decision. It was always back and forth, you know, between two schools in states. So I'm happy to make my decision. So another big pickup on the offensive line for Alabama. Kennedy picked the tide over Auburn. Basically, that's the two schools that it came down to. But he also had offers from the likes of Mississippi State, Tennessee, and others. But with the good news came some bad news last week that linebacker commitment Leo Lewis has decommitted from Alabama. Lewis was on the campus of Mississippi State in Starkville during 
their camp when he made the decommitment. The good news is he did not commit to Mississippi State as some thought that he might. Where's Alabama stand now in the well, linebacker out of Brookhaven? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. You know, I think Alabama certainly has an opportunity to, you know, regain that commitment. But, you know, Mississippi State's done an outstanding job. I know they've thought for about a month or so that they were going to be able to flip him. Uh, Ole Miss is in there, too. He made a visit to Ole Miss after he went to uh, after he went to Mississippi State. So I think the Mississippi schools really right now are, are really strong with him. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it, how it unfolds. Well, as we take a look at the current state of the 2015 class, remember that little old lady on the Wendy's commercial? She always asks, where's the beef? Yep. Right there, Alabama. Look at the linemen. They are really, really filling up again. Nick Saban believes you build up front and you fill in the skill players around the offensive and defensive lines, but you can't win in the SEC unless you're strong on the line of scrimmage. Well, more coming up here on TITV, including an update on a couple of former Crimson Tiders in the NFL. And next, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the information on how you can get in touch with us is on your screen. Our guys and girls in the control room are answering the phones now. You can email us or you can reach us on Twitter. More Tider Insider TV right after this break. Two former Crimson Tide players found themselves on the NFL's active non-football injury list this week, Marshall Darius and A.J. McCarron. Darius felt his physical never good, while McCarron is out due to shoulder tightness. All right, it's time now to go to the Med Center hotline. We've got some phone calls lined up, Rodney. Let's go to Moundville and talk with John Michael. Hey, John Michael, welcome into the program. Uh, thank you very much. How y'all doing? Very well. Uh, I just wanted to ask y'all a question. Y'all think Alabama will go undefeated this year? Well, I think, uh, like I, I've said the last several years, they've got a chance. I mean, the way I look at it, John and Michael, has got to break it down game by game. Alabama's good enough, if they play well, to beat every team on their schedule. Of course, it's very difficult to do. Only one time since Nick Saban has been here has he finished the season perfect, and that was 2009. 2008, they got to 12-0. This past year, they got to 11-0. It's hard to do, but potentially, they're good enough to do it. Yep, a lot of good teams on the schedule. When you look at it, John Michael, you never really know what, you know, some of these SEC teams, like, for example, Auburn last year, nobody really thought that they would have the run that they had. You look at Arkansas this year, I think they'll be much improved uh, under their second-year coach. You look at Florida, their team with a lot of defensive talent. You never know exactly how their offensive coordinator is going to help them. So, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, uh, it's, it's a difficult road, and, you know, it's always tough. As you mentioned, Gary, Coach Saban's only had one undefeated season here. Those things don't happen very often. They really don't. All right, let's stay in Malville and talk with Dale. Hey, Dale, welcome into the show. Hey, Gary, Rodney. How are uh, you? I actually have two questions. Okay. I would like to know about a uh, basketball prospect by the name of uh, Nick Marshall, a six foot ten, 235-pounder from uh, Lexington, Kentucky. It's Alabama has a shot at him, and also I've heard talk about a uh, defensive tackle freshman, true freshman, that's been pressing 500 pounds, and I'm thinking maybe that's probably Josh Frazier, and if it is, how are they going to keep him off the field? All right, Dale, first let me handle the basketball situation. I am familiar with the prospect, don't know much about him. I'll have to check and see where Alabama stands, and I'll try to pass that along next week. The defensive tackle prospect out of Arkansas, you're correct, is Josh Frazier. Reports are he benches 500, but that's not enough just in itself to get you on the field. He's a good prospect, but there's a lot of big, strong defensive yeah. linemen at Alabama. Yeah, I think one area where he might be able to help Gary is a strong interior player. I think Alabama certainly could use some more bodies there, and I think when you look at Josh Frazier, Dale, I think, uh, you know, again, we have to kind of wait till fall camp and see how they do once the pads get on, but he's certainly a guy to keep an eye on. You know, I will remind you this. It goes back a while. Rodney will remember the guy, one of the strongest players to ever come through yeah. here in the history of the program is Robbie Staten out of Pearl, Mississippi. He never played. That's right. So, yeah, but I, but I do think Frazier's a good football player. That That's what's most important. All right, let's take an email, Rod, and uh, this is from Ray and Glencoe. Do you think Coach Saban will wait closer to the West Virginia game to name a starting quarterback? I do. I, 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 you know, now he might come out after three days of practice and name a starter. My guess is it probably won't be uh, until the press conference that Monday before the game on Saturday uh, when the depth chart's released. Probably. That's my guess. Probably. You know, what is it that we always see on the depth chart, that first depth chart, uh, you know, when they yeah. have the, and or. The, and or the, the brackets <laughs> there? You know, certainly that's a possibility. I, I do. I would expect, Gary, like you said, I don't think you'll 
we'll know necessarily who will be the starter until probably the, 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 uh, the week of the game. All right, more to come on TITV, including some dance moves from one of Alabama's most dangerous weapons. And more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Phone lines are open, 205-348-9882. Email us or reach us on social media. We want to hear from you when we come back. One good thing about Media Days, you can ask about anything we did, and Christian Jones delivered. This is just a sampling of some of the dance moves, which allegedly won him a team dance-off. He said, that's all you get, <laughs> guys and girls. He didn't give us much, but it was still pretty good. You see him breaking it down. More fun coming up in the next segment with the best of SEC Media Days. Right now, let's head back to the Med Center hotline and talk with PJ in Birmingham. PJ, welcome in. PJ, you there? Going once, going twice. PJ wanted to know about the Alabama Hoops roster, if, if those guys are on campus. From what I understand, all of the signees are, are here and, and getting ready for, for school, you know, and uh, will be ready to go in October when they open practice. Good signing class, good group of returnees. Uh, basketball team uh, should have a, a pretty good outlook this year. All right, let's go to Northport and talk with Bama Jack. Bama Jack, you there? Yeah, hang uh, on. Good, glad you're here. Go with it. Go, go with it. My question is, with all this media hype about Jacob Coke going to be a starting quarterback, do y'all, again, Rodney, think that's going to have any effect on the morale of our other players, especially the quarterbacks? I don't think it'll bother Blake Sims. Blake Sims, he's just an all-up, straightforward team guy anyway. He wouldn't care if, he wouldn't care if NFC Bass beat him out, but I'm worried about the people like Cooper Bateman by the effect of their morale. All right, Bama Jack, uh, I think you're right on Blake Sims, a, a great team guy, but I think they're more worried about what Nick Saban thinks, Rodney. And, and to be honest with you, I think the media stuff, the fans know much more about what's going on than the players. Not saying that they're immune to it, but but they're worried about what goes on in that camp. I don't think media hype about Coker is going to affect any of those other quarterbacks. I don't think it at, at, at all. I think he's blended in really well from what you know what from what we can gather, Gary. I think certainly he's a team guy, and you know they're all out there competing, and I think they can see as they watch the competition exactly who probably is the best player, and I don't I don't think it's going to play any role at all. You know, I'm getting <coughs> up to speed on Twitter. It's taking me a while. I love it when people tweet in. Now that I'm now that I'm working my Twitter account, so look me up and follow me on Twitter. We got a Twitter question here. Will Ryan Anderson develop a role with the first teams at Jack or defensive end in 2014? From Kyle Lawler. Uh, you know, that's a good question, Kyle. And he has a chance. I mean, a lot of those guys do, but Ryan Anderson. Kind of a guy that kind of gets overlooked, but uh, still a, a, a real physical presence. Well, I think he has an opportunity as a pass rusher, Gary, in certain situations. And, you know, again, there's always competition at, at every position, so I don't want to say that he couldn't. But, you know, there are some other guys, Denzel Duvall, Xavier Dixon. You know, Tim Williams is a guy that looked really good in the spring game and had a great spring as a jack linebacker, great pass rusher. And I think that when you look at Ryan Anderson, I, I do believe that he'll make a contribution. Now, will he be the number one jack? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, there's right. a lot of competition. There. there is a lot of competition. You mentioned a guy like Anderson. There's a bunch of other really talented, highly recruited players yeah. that are just battling to get on the field on that defensive side. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up another edition of TITV. Thanks for the phone calls, emails, and tweets. You'll want to stick around because we have a really special treat for you next. It's the best of SEC Media Days, some of the lighthearted moments from last week. Stay tuned. Tider Insider TV will return on a beautiful evening. Look at those clouds here in Tuscaloosa. We're back after this. Welcome back, everybody. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. This is Tider Insider Television. We've been talking SEC Media Days because it was a huge event last week. It's always filled with lots of X's and O's talk, but more than that, you know, we get a chance to get off topic sometimes and have a little fun. And the coaches and players, it's the one time you can get them to loosen up just a little bit. And our very own Bradley Whittington was there all week, and he put together a great compilation of, if you will, of the best of SEC Media Days. Check it out. It was miserable. I hated it, uh, but it was some great fun. I. Uh, uh, but anytime one of them tells me he wants to go pro, I shake his hand, say good luck, I'm all for you. And when a player says I'm going pro, I shake his hand, say good luck. We shake their hand and wish them the best. And It's uh, Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yeah. We see if we can get something to eat. And, uh... well, everybody hits my Debbie cookies up and, you know, everybody gets on me for eating them, but there's nobody that passes the cookie jar without grabbing one. Boom. Mizzou. Well, I'm glad we got to that part. That makes... No! 
now I'm kind of zeroed in. Um, <laughs> Why would I expect it not to? Did he bring you? You expect you it not to? Is that is that no, the question? I've <laughs> so the quarterback doesn't really matter. Yeah, it does. Okay. That's why we recruited him. We rented bikes. We rented bikes and it just happened to rain like hell. So it doesn't make a difference who you have at quarterback? That's not what I said. Oh. Yeah, think about it, right? Okay. Okay. Team on two. Team. Oh, what the hell. All right. <laughs> One, two. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> What's your funniest moment with Nick Saban? Oh, well, he, um, I felt like he tried to drown me one time. Yeah. <laughs> the eldest son um, had a teacher say to him, so, do you eat grass too? <laughs> Man, he says, hey, listen, it's not like we have casserole. We just, eat a blade of grass. She'll be fine. Just let her cry. That was a mistake now. <laughs> That was a huge mistake. I mean, I promise you, some of the experiences I had there, I'll not have again. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking about my players. I'm going, damn, we just talked about three and out, and I'm going to long <laughs> venue. I'm, three years is not quite long enough. Uh, Every year that we've been fortunate enough to win the championship, you pick somebody else to win it. So um, just to let you know that we're evaluating you. Thank you. <laughs>